So, what is going on YouTube? It's your boy Sam from Team Samurai X1 here. Hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day. This week was the ban list, and you guys all know once the ban list drops, your boy always goes in the lab after the ban list drops, and you know, I look into the future. Yeah! But in today's video, I'm coming at you with the top five best meta decks for the September 2020 ban list. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Not only am I gonna be talking to you guys about the top five best meta decks, but in today's video, I'm also gonna be talking about the decks with the highest potential for the September 2020 ban list. So I just really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember guys, at the end of the day, this is my opinion on what I think is the top five best deck. Usually I'm always right. <laughs> Honestly, listen, if I was psychic enough to guess exactly what's on the ban list, you guys better take my word on this top five best metal deck list because you know me. You can call me Mystic Mike because I predict these things. Anyways, for those of you here on the channel for the very first time, consider on hitting the subscribe button and make sure you guys turn on. I love you. If you if if you kiss this, like how you love your your, your parents, you love your girlfriend, or you love your boyfriend, please click on this button. Please, I love you. <laughs> and as always, don't forget to like the thumbs up button. You guys didn't think, oh, look, look, look at that. I switched it up today. I switched it up. Break uppercut elbow. I'm just kidding. You guys think I'm going to drop the uppercut elbow? Yo, yo, listen. All right, guys, so don't waste any more of your time. Without further ado, let's get started with the top five best meta decks for the September 2020 ban list. All right, guys, without further ado. Let's begin. All right guys, let's get started with the top five best meta decks. So basically, I don't have any specific orders on the rankings on these top five best meta decks. I feel like it's better to talk about these five decks individually and their strengths for this September 2020 balance. I feel like this format is gonna be very diverse with some rogue decks coming to the picture and also some decks with the highest potential getting tops here and there, right? So the format is gonna be fairly diverse and I'm gonna be talking to you guys about these five decks and these five decks are really good decks to be able to compete in this September 2020 balance. And mark my words, these decks are definitely top tier meta decks for the 2020 format. So let's get started with the very first deck I wanna talk about. First and foremost, let's get Dogmatica out of the way. Dogmatica is obviously one of the most powerful engines that this game has ever seen. Not only is it a really good engine, but it's also a really good deck as well. Some of the decks that work really well with Dogmaticas are decks like Evoked, you know, Alistair the Invoker, the Magical Meltdown, Invocation, Macabre. All those cards right here did not get touched on the Forbidden and Limited list. And smashing the Invoked engine with Dogmatica gives you a really powerful deck that also is really good going first and also is really good going second. Dogmatica Invokes is one of those decks that can play multiple hand traps in the deck and is relying on actually comboing off with just a simple one card, whether or not it'll be summoning Alistair or activating the Deer Servant, right? So the deck is actually very, very versatile and did not get touched on the Forbidden and Limited list. And with that being said, I truly believe that Dominica Invoke has really, really huge potential in the September 2020 format. And it's definitely in the top five best decks, 100,000%. Not only does it get access to the extra deck by setting cards like Entis, Skull Knight, you know, Wind Pegasus, a bunch of awesome cards to be able to send to the Greyward using the Deer Servant is just absolutely phenomenal. Especially Ash Dragon, Special Summon Ecclesia, or Ash Dragon searching the Fleur de Lis directly from the deck to the hand is absolutely incredible. So the deck is just very strong, combining itself off with the Invoked Engine. That's what makes the deck really, really powerful. And also at the same time, they have one of the best trap cards to the disposal, which is Dogmatica Punishment. One of the cards that literally pops two cards built in one. The card is just insane. Sending Entis to the graveyard to pop a monster and then using Dogmatica Punishment's effect to pop another monster on the field is just... 
The engine is definitely one of the most destructive and powerful engines that this game has ever seen. And the fact that both of these engines, the Volked engine and also the Dogmatica engine did not get touched on the Forbidden Realm list makes this deck a huge threat for the 2020 metagame. Also at the same time, Dogmatica is not only good with Invoked, but it's also really great with Eldritch. And I'll talk to you guys a little bit further once I progress through the different decks on this top five meta deck list. Alright guys, so that's pretty much it for Dogmaticas. The next deck that I would like to talk about is Infernobles. Infernobles is definitely one of the scariest warrior decks that this game has ever seen. The fact that this deck feeds off one card combos is absolutely ridiculous. Summoning Neo Space Connector and activating its effect to special summon Aqua Dolphin directly from the deck is probably the most terrifying thing that this game has ever seen. Not only do you able to get a look at your hand with Aqua Dolphin, but SMOKE GRENADE! THIS! Smoke grenade isn't bad, right? So the deck can still do the exact same thing, minus the jet synchron and also minus the O-line. Definitely my boy Pac has some cool decks and combos for you guys to check out. So make sure you guys check out Pac's channel if you guys want to further learn about Infernoble Knights. But I'll have a deck profile coming very, very soon on the deck. But the deck is literally still the same, minus the jet synchron and O-line. The deck still combos the same with just one card, uh, which is ridiculous. As long as Zod is in the picture, I believe the deck just has full steam and full power. The fact that Zod is able to start all their combo plays, the fact that you're able to get access to Charles, get access to Smoke Grenade, access to Herald, Borlo, Savage Dragon, and the deck is just so, so powerful still. And the combos are still gonna be the exact same, but you're gonna be obviously tweaking the combos a little bit different because you do not have access to O-Line and Jet Synchron anymore. So you're gonna be doing the combo a little bit differently. Maybe using Power Tool Dragon, maybe using Black Spirit or Zombie. I'll let you guys be the judge of that. But the deck is still gonna do what it does best. Look at your opponent's hand, loop cards at your opponent's hand, put up multiple negates with Savage and also Herald, and also at the same time putting up negates with the Phoenix Gear Freed. The board is still gonna be very scary. The deck is still very terrifying. And if you guys aren't prepared for that deck, you guys are definitely gonna be losing those duels, right? So be prepared for Infernoble Knights. The deck is just, Still, still crazy. So that's the second deck that I like to talk about. Do not sleep on the Soul Turbo. Do not sleep on one card in for a normal night deck. And I'll have the deck list for you guys very, very soon. All right, guys, and the third deck that I would like to talk about is Outlitch. Outlitch, I truly believe, is one of the most powerful trap decks that this game has ever seen. And like I mentioned earlier, decks like Dogmatica Elridge, as you guys seen in the Remote Duel Invitational, Jesse Khan piloted this deck all the way to the top four. And the deck is able to produce a lot of great results because you're able to include great engines like Dogmatica into Eldritch to make this deck more powerful than it already is. Cards like Sanguine, cards like Aquero, cards like Conquistadors are really great trap cards that helps the deck roll out in steam. The deck, the, the, these cards are really powerful. It's built in DD Crow, built in Monster Pop. The deck literally does everything and the amount of advantages that this deck is able to generate is absolutely ridiculous by easily banishing the spell cards or their trap cards to get access to their elixirs or to get access into their Golden Land cards is super easy to do and the deck just generates so much more resources and is definitely one of the best grind decks that this game has ever seen, especially for the September 2020 format. Not only that, Eldritch Golden Lord is a pretty big beater within itself and has amazing ability to get rid of any problematic card on the field, which is absolutely incredible. And not only that, the deck does have access to rank 10 XC's monster like Libe and also Gustav Max, which is also really, really good. And the deck is also a really great splashable engine. Like you can literally splash any engine into Eldritch. You can splash Dogmatica. And like I said, with Ecclesias and the Deer Servant, getting access to the Astro deck, searching, you know, dumping the Astro Dragon, you know, dumping the Ash Dragon to the graveyard to get an Ecclesia search or especially Ecclesia to search Fleur de Lis directly from your next turn hand is absolutely incredible. Not only that, Eldritch is a trap based deck, and if you're a trap based deck, you can easily include the Dogmatica engine because you can play Dogmatica Punishment, which is one of the most powerful trap cards that this game has ever seen. So, mixing Eldritch with Dogmatica just produces a really overall strong and powerful top tier deck for this 2020 minute game. Also, not only that, if you are still playing the Numeron variant of Eldritch, you can easily set up the Zexal Lock to lock your opponent from playing the Yu-Gi-Oh, which is fun, right? Which is 
It's pretty sad, but you can still do that because Zexo did not get banned. You can easily lock your opponent from doing anything whatsoever and backing yourself in multiple trap cards is absolutely insane. So trap stun next. If you guys are playing for more control variant type decks, Hell Lich is definitely the deck that you should play. And for those of you who want to play meta, Hell Lich is a deck that you definitely got to watch out for for the September 2020 format. So that's pretty much it. l is still a very, very strong deck minus the Jet Synchron engine. Jet Synchron was just like an additional engine that you could easily put out by you know summoning Hero and also Borlord Savage Dragon. But without the Jet Synchron engine, the deck just plays a really strong grind game and also a really heavily control type deck. So l is definitely a deck that you gotta watch out for. The next deck that dodged the ban list once again is Dragon Link. And Dragon Link is an overall spectrum of different types of dragon strategies that you can play. Most importantly, the deck just focuses around on actually making Dragon Link monsters like LP, Pisty, and basically Link Climbing to make your unbreakable board, starting basically from LP and also starting from Pisty. So the deck is still very, very strong. Rockets are really good in Dragon Link, obviously. If you guys want to play Red Eyes Dragon Link, you guys can play that as well. Dragons in general is one of those decks that are super duper consistent and is one of the decks that can easily put out the scariest boards that this game has ever seen. And there are so many different variations of Dragon Links. The most popular Dragon Link variant is the Rocket Dragon Link, where you're able to put up this first turn on breaking board by just starting off with one card, and then you pretty much just win the duel. The deck is very strong at putting up the gates, and not only that, the deck still has access to the Buster Lock, which locks your opponent from using the extra deck. You guys all know how problematic the Buster Lock is. The deck still has access to that, uh, which is insane. And not only that, like I mentioned earlier, you can play different variations of Dragon Links. Like I showcased earlier on my channel, the Blue Eyes Dragon Link deck that did not get touched on the ban list whatsoever is completely at full power. You can easily make VFD and draw five with absolute Ease. The deck is just super duper insane. And Dragon Link is just overall a very competitive Yu-Gi-Oh deck that just dodged the ban list once again. As long as LP is still alive, any Dragon Link based deck is still gonna be viable as long as that card exists, especially alongside Pisty as well. So Dragon Links is one of those strategies that you definitely gotta watch out for. And there are so many different variations in Dragon Links, Rockets, Red Eyes, Blue Eyes, whatever you guys wanna name it. There are so many different ways to play Dragon Links. And this is why I love this deck so much because it is super versatile there's not any specific way that the deck should be played. The deck is just super duper versatile. You can play anything you want. And not only that, Dragon Maids can also be incorporated into the Dragon Link engine as well, which is absolutely amazing, right? And with Chamber and Hospitality and things like that, Dragon Link as a whole entire archetype, it's definitely a top tier contender for this September 2020 balance. So that's pretty much it on the Dragon Link topic. And the last deck that I wanna talk about is definitely ready for it. Yes, come on, come on. No, it's not, it's not that, whatever you guessed. Think about Moki Mokis, no, get out of the way. Think about Egyptian gods, no, get out of the way. I'm talking about dinosaurs. Ooh. I'm definitely a little bit hyped when it comes to dinosaurs and I purposely left this deck at the very end because it is obviously my favorite deck. I'm not saying it is the number one top tier meta deck, it is. But the deck is really powerful. You guys know what Miscellanosaurus does? Yeah. You guys know what UCT, Ultimate Conductor Toronto does? The deck is actually very strong. The deck did not get touched on the ban list whatsoever. And I truly believe that Dinosaurs has one of the biggest potential when it comes to the top five best meta decks, 100,000%. It's a deck that can easily break boards. It's a deck that can easily play around anything. It's a deck that can easily play around 10 gazillion billion hand traps because of Miscellanosaurus. The deck just does everything built in one. And not only that, this deck is also super duper budget as well. So for those of you who are looking for a top tier contender and that actually want to win, but also at the same time be on a budget, Dinosaurs is definitely the choice for you. And a lot of you guys are saying, Sam, you're so biased. How about Dinosaurs? Like you, like you, you did not include this deck on your ban list prediction. And the reason why I didn't include it on the ban list is because I knew it was not gonna get hit. It it didn't make sense to hit this card. It did not make sense to hit Dinosaur whatsoever. If you guys were to look at the top five meta decks last format, Dinosaurs wasn't even in the picture because a lot of people decided to choose Adam Emancipators and Elledge over that deck. So the deck was definitely unlooked 
for sure. Maybe on the next ban list, if a lot of people decide to play this deck, it might get addressed on the ban list, but just because I play it, the deck, the deck won't get banned because I play it, right? Yeah, dinosaurs does not get touched on this ban list. You guys seen in the remote duel how the deck was played and how I piloted the deck. So the deck does have huge potential for this 2020 meta game. So that's pretty much it for the top five best meta decks. I don't have any specific orders on these decks, but I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about each deck and what they do and their functionality in this 2020 ban list. I truly believe that this list produces a super diverse format. It's gonna be a ton of decks in and out, here and there. Yu-Gi-Oh is basically gonna be super fun for this ban list, right? So yeah, guys, watch out for the top five best meta decks. These are the decks that you guys are gonna see for the September 2020 ban list format, 100,000%. Be sure to get your playmat today at tsx1.com. Let me take you guys quickly through this list of some of the decks that have the highest potential for the September 2020 format. The first deck that I want to talk about is definitely Phantom Knights. Phantom Knights is a deck that recently got a huge, huge boost from this Forbidden and Limited list with Rusty Bardish being unbanned, Tour Guide to 3, Graph and Seer both to two. Burning Abyss also got a huge buff as well with the Tour Guide and Graph and Seer uh, to two and Tour Guide to three. But in comparison to Burning Abyss, I believe Phantom Knights is just way more superior than Burning Abyss. I don't believe Burning Abyss is that meta impactful and I don't believe that the deck has the highest potential uh, in the meta game. It's still good with the buff, but it's not better than Phantom Knights and especially with Phantom Rage coming out, man, tier scale. It just breaks the deck with Rusty Bardish, man. This deck is gonna be a top tier contender for sure. Arguably the best deck in the upcoming sets of Rising Rampage. The deck is able to set up 11 negates. If that's not scary, then I don't know what the heck is. And yeah, Phantom Knights is a deck you guys gotta watch out for sure. This deck has huge potential post Phantom Rage and especially with the boost of Rusty Bardish coming off the Forbidden Elemental list. The second deck that I wanna talk about is Animancipators. Although the deck did lose Block Dragon, which is pretty sad. Not only did it lose Block Dragon, but they lost Jet and also Mecha Phantom O-line, but even though they lost Block Dragon, I think that the deck is still playable. It is not completely garbage. The deck is still good, but with Block Dragon, the deck was just tier 0.5, and it wasn't fair whatsoever because of how Block Dragon functioned with an Emancipator, right? But the deck is still gonna be able to do what it does best, spam boards, make unbreakable boards, break boards, OTK. The deck is still really good, but you just require a little bit more luck now uh, with your excavations, right? But other than that, I truly believe rocks are still a pretty solid pick. Next, I actually wanna talk about heroes. Heroes are actually pretty underrated for this Forbidden Elemental list. A lot of people underlook how powerful Mask Hero Dark Library is. Uh, first turn, Macrocosmos, backing up with Honest Neos is absolutely incredible. Not only is it that good going first to make your first turn Dark Law and Unbreakable Boards, but it's also really good going second to actually produce OTKs through Trinity and things like that. And especially the fact that we get access to triple tactics talent now, we can easily play around cards in the Biru, which is actually really, really good. So Heroes is definitely a deck that you should watch out for. 100,000% and it's one of those decks that never got touched on the ban list whatsoever. So Heroes definitely has a high potential for this Forbidden and Limited list. The next deck I want to talk about is Pendulums. With the recent ban list, the deck did get a huge buff off Double Iris Magician. Double Iris Magician being able to search your interruption as form of Time Pendulum Graph is absolutely incredible. So you definitely got to watch out for that 100%. Pendulums are always a deck that never got touched on the ban list because it's always a deck that's really underrated and I believe not a lot of people play this deck and that's why I appreciate Triff on always putting this deck on the map because I truly believe that the deck does have a highest potential in today's meta game. It's definitely going to be played here and there but not a lot of people just play it. Maybe once Electromite comes back a lot of people will play this deck but right now the deck is still really good as is and I truly believe it's one of the most underrated sleeper decks for the 2020 meta game. So watch out for Pendulum. I believe it has a really high ceiling with Double Iris Magician and the fact it's able to create unbreakable boards, different variations of the decks. The deck is still really really good so make sure you guys watch out for pendulums and the last couple of decks i want to talk about is abc's with dragon buster coming back to two it will actually open up this deck to a lot of players to actually trying this deck once again one dragon buster was pretty much it was pretty sad you know what i mean it's like playing it's yeah it's it's not good also called by the Gravies at one now so the deck can still see a lot of play because you know what happens once you tribute Dragon Buster and it gets called by the grave. You pretty much lose a duel with one Buster, right? But now you have two Buster. The deck is still 
viable. It has high potential in this meta game. And a lot of people are definitely gonna be trying out this deck 100,000%. So watch out for ABCs. And the last deck that I wanna talk about, which personally is my favorite on this Forbidden and Limited list, is definitely Monarchs. Monarchs is low key, super duper scary. Majesty's feet can't activate monster effects. Vanity feet can't special summon. Domain can't summon from the extra deck. Monarchs erupt. Skill drain. Erebus takes a card out of your opponent's hand. Aether special summons a monarch directly from the deck. Pantheism. Pot of greed which is not once per turn. You have three pot of greeds in the deck. You have Pantheism of the Monarchs. That card is ridiculous. And it's definitely one of the cards that literally boosted Monarchs to oblivion. Not only that, the deck does have Stormforth as well. Stormforth Aether combo, good luck, have fun. The deck is crazy at breaking boards. And most importantly, if you're able to go first with the deck, and if you're able to summon Majesty, Fiend, Domain Lock, Monarchs Erupt, you might as well extend your handshake your opponent because there's no point in playing against Domain, Vanity's Fiend, and also the Monarchs are up. So yeah, man, Monarchs are crazy with Pantheism to three. Super ridiculous, man. And I truly believe it's one of the most unfair decks in today's metagame. And it's also one of those decks that have the highest potential on this Forbidden and Limited list. So that's pretty much it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed. There are a million, gazillion decks out there that have high potential in today's metagame. Like I said, guys, Yu-Gi-Oh! is a very fun and diverse game that you're allowed to play any deck that you want. You can explore any strategies, explore any decks that you guys would like. But these are just some of the decks that I listed and I truly believe have really high potential. A lot of decks are piloted by great players. So if you wanna play Madolches and you think the deck is good, play Madolches. If you wanna play Guru or Ultra Geist, play Ultra Geist or Guru. It doesn't matter what you guys play. Play whatever you guys like. Any deck can be competitive. Any deck can be powerful if it's piloted and built correctly. So play what you love. And if I ever got some decks on this list, Please make sure you guys leave it in the comments section below. I would love to hear your thoughts and comments on what you guys think on the top five best meta decks and also some of the decks that have highest potential in the next upcoming sets or in the next coming format. So make sure you guys comment in the comments section below. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys are ever trying to buy any of these decks, make sure you guys buy it in the link down below. I'll leave a link where you guys can buy literally every single deck in today's meta game in the link down below. So make sure you guys check that out. This is your boy Sam from Team Star Sam signing out. All right, guys. Peace. Oh, and by the way, sweater coming soon. It's hoodie season, baby. It's hoodie season. All right, guys. Peace. Be sure to get your playmat today at tsx1.com.